Indonesian Muslim groups demand that Holocaust exhibition be closed. On January 27th, the ex exhibit titled Shoah, How Is It Humanly Possible? Wow. Wait. Launched wow. Wow. I just did. You, that's so, I don't know what this news is about, but you, that is so bold. Are, are you serious? <laughs> like what? But, oh, wow. The audacity, but go on. Okay. Go on. Sorry. Okay. I to interrupt that. Okay. On January 27th, the exhibit titled Shoah, How Is It Humanly Possible? was launched at the Holocaust Museum in Indonesia's North uh, Sulawesi province. Since the opening, the exhibition has caused has been causing an outcry from conservative Muslims and Islamic scholar groups. Uh, Sudar Noto Abdul Hakim, head of foreign relations and international cooperation of the country's Indonesian Ulema Council, demanded that the exhibition and museum be closed. Many Muslims and religious groups fear that the in museum is an initiation uh, or indication of the Indonesian government's plan to strengthen and normalize diplomatic ties with Israel. The exhibit is hosted by Shar uh, Ha Shai, Shar Ha Shamayin, Indonesia's lone synagogue. Yaakov Baruch, uh, rabbi of Shar Ha Shamayin said he built the museum to educate Indonesians on the dangers of anti-Semitism and hate crimes. How big of a tell this is when they, okay, so when they say we're anti-Israel, we're not anti-Jewish, we're not anti-Semitic, okay? How telling this is when they're like a Holocaust exhibition they see it as a way of promoting Israel. Like if this is not an indication that a lot of these people are not just anti-Israel and they see anti-Jewish with anti-Israel for them goes hand in hand. Like, is this not, a, is not the biggest tell on themselves that if you are, if you are warning people, if you are talking people about to talking to people with history, and the crimes that were committed against the Jewish people, they see that as pro-Israel, right? So just remember this next time they say that, oh, we're just against Israeli policies and foreign policies. We're not against Jewish people. They, they are saying that the promotion of awareness of the crimes that happened during the Holocaust, they see it as a pro-Israeli stance. Like, how... Oh, by the way, guys, again, remind, reminder to everybody that this is Indonesia, it's supposed to be the most moderate, liberal, advanced, progressive Islamic countries, one of them. Like this, Malaysia and Tunisia are the examples that we are all constantly are, are given, okay? Guys, where in the a goddamn planet would this be tolerated? A Holocaust, like imagine like anywhere else on the planet that is not Islamic, somebody comes and suggests like, let's shut down this Holocaust museum. Imagine the reactions, imagine the, the backlash, okay? But again, this is a Islamic country, so standards are different and expectations are different. But go on. So this was supposed to be, or at, at the moment is, the country's only permanent Holocaust like memorial or exhibit. It's supposed to be permanent and this is the only one so far there's only one synagogue in all of indonesia and there are only roughly 100 jews in indonesia and what's interesting is indonesia only recognizes five religions it's like buddhism catholicism protestantism um hinduism and islam so if you're a jew you are forced to identify on your documentation as one of the other religions because Judaism isn't even recognized as a religion by the state. So if, if, if they said, if you live like in a Muslim area, you'll just like mark as a Muslim in your documentation, or a lot of them have moved to Christian areas um, to avoid persecution. So they're listed as Christians. Um, a professor of world religions at the University of Notre Dame said, Indonesians do not always distinguish between Jews and Israelis, Siri said. They also do not distinguish between the foreign policy of the state and the people of Israel. That is a problem. See, this is, oh my God, like I didn't even, guys, I haven't even read this article. This is exactly what my, my conclusion from this. Who said that? Who said that? A professor that at Notre Dame. 
guys, I'm not even a professor, okay? See, my conclusions of my interpretation of what's just happening, like, see, like, I don't even need a degree in any, you know, and I, I have the same, this is why you have to like this video, okay? Because you come here and I have the same conclusions as a professor without any of the background degrees or anything like that. So, yeah. Patrons, this is what you're getting, this is what you're paying us for, okay? This is what What I find very interesting doing. is that, um, wait, so there is a lot of fear right now or um, about um, Indonesia normalizing ties with Israel right now, because apparently there were some comments by um, Secretary of State Antony Blinken um, Wait, here we go. The demand to shutter the exhibit arises in, amid circulating rumors of increased diplomatic relations between Indonesia and Israel, which do not currently yet have formal ties. Last month, Israeli officials said U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken raised the possibility of normalized relations, suggesting that Indonesia might join several other Muslim nations in opening ties with Israel. The claim was later confirmed by the Indonesian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, but officials have played down the reports of increased discussion. Barriers to normalized relations remain high, including fears from Indonesia's current leaders that they would lose the support of the majority Muslim public who want independence for the Palestinian people. Along those lines, this is what I thought was very interesting. There was, um, wait, let me read this quote. Um, we demand any an exhibition be stopped and the museum be canceled and discontinued, said uh, Sadur Noto uh, Abdul Hakim, the head of the foreign relations and international cooperation with the, the guy who's really high up in the Ulama Council. Jewish communities and the descendants of the Jewish people everywhere, including in, in, in Indonesia and North Sulawesi, should always see fairly clearly the brutal acts that have been perpetrated by Israeli Zionists against the Palestinian people since 1948. What does this so, got to do with the Holocaust? Like apparent, like, I'm like, do you want a side by side exhibition? Like, what are you asking for like, dude? They're <laughs> not the same people. Okay. They're not the same people. Even the people in Israel today are not this responsible for anything that happens, you know, all of the things that happened to the Palestinians. Right. Like, what does it got to do with the Holocaust? Like, imagine, imagine if you, oh, you know, like the Christchurch shooting that happens, right? Like this is, okay, so they're like, we have to remember that Israel did this and this and this to Palestinian, okay? While we're talking about the Holocaust music, okay? Imagine, imagine if we had a memorial for the Christchurch shooting of the Muslims, right? Or Muslims in the mosque. And you were like, we should, we should shut down this memorial and we need to also, or have a side by side, uh, you know, uh, memorial dedicated to the crimes committed by the Islamic Empire. Imagine if I bring that or, or, up. No, committed to to Jewish ethnic cleansing from the Arab world. Yeah. No. Yeah. Imagine they were like, "Hey, Christchurch. What about 9/11? Huh? Like, imagine if I did that. Imagine yeah, how. By the way, I'm not saying any of that. Like. Oh yeah, Christchurch Memorial. Do these people not remember what happened in 9/11? Like, Im Im imagine if I said that. Like, I hope like everybody here would be shocked if I said something like that. Okay, like they would be like, "What the hell, are man? What's wrong with you?" That's what these people are saying. They're like Holocaust. What about Palestinians? I'm like, okay, buddy. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> the only. Oh yeah. Um, Sultan is thing. Same thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the only like vague connection that they can make that is in any way, like, I don't even want to say legitimate, um, towards what they're saying, but it should be noted that cause they, you know, they're, they, they're basically saying, oh, well, this isn't acceptable because this shows that we're normalizing with Israel, which is just insane. But, um, they particularly objected to the exhibits ties to Yad Vashem. Who, because the museum's director has ties to Israeli settlements in the West Bank. So, like, Wait, that that's again? it. The The museum's director has ties to Israel's settlements in the West Bank. And there might be um, some financial contribution there. Mm. Well, ties financially. I'm pretty sure I have ties to people in the West Bank. Who doesn't have ties to people like like Armin? Seriously. You know what they mean. It's not the same. No, it's it is the same because like it's six degrees of separation. Everybody has ties to everything to to some extent. 
Okay. Like, okay. Oh, yeah. By the way, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure if there's a memorial from Christchurch, okay, there will be some people who have ties to Hamas who will be contributing some money to it. Okay. So you want to shut down the memorial because of that? Anyways, I don't know how how significant the ties are. I don't even know if that's a bad thing. Okay, there are Jews in Israel who want to support like things, who want to support like Holocaust memorials. The only problem, by the way, my only problem with Holocaust memorials, okay, okay, this is this is not gonna, this should not be controversial. If this is controversial, there's something wrong with you, okay. If anybody thinks this is like a, this is like offensive, mm -hmm. okay. My only issue with Holocaust museums is that it doesn't have enough. Um, dedicated exhibitions to hand the handicapped people who died from the in the holocaust to the lgbt community who died in the holocaust again i'm not when i say this i'm not saying there should be less attention to all the jewish people who died in the Holocaust. that should all be there i'm not saying remove from that i'm saying that the romanis the lgbt people the handicaps um and yeah, all the other people who died from the Holocaust should also be um, remembered in Holocaust Museum, right? I don't like that. The, the it Romani? seems like I said Romani. Oh, I said yeah. I don't. I said I don't like the fact that every single Holocaust Museum seems to just be main, like mainly Jewish themed. Like it's mainly themed through it. Like it actually, it should be mainly Jewish, but it should be at least the. Um, a, a ratio at least like two 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 over nine like what's what's the percentage two out of nine like at least like around 30 percent of the museum should be dedicated given the given the numbers of um other victims that they had as well okay so that's my only criticism but there should be holocaust museums there should be more holocaust museums okay holocaust museum you know what you know th there should be um oh another criticism i have for holocaust museums is that they're not being used to highlight, most of them are not being used to highlight current genocides, right? The point, the point of remembering the past is to avoid things happening in the future, okay? So, for example, the nation of Israel, which is the main funder of Holocaust museums in the world, which I see it as a positive, it's also a nation that has not officially recognized the Armenian genocide, okay? And I always wanna say like, what is the point of remembering the Holocaust? Is it just all like, oh, this bad thing happened and we are the victims? Or is the point of remembering the Holocaust to learn from history, to try to raise the, uh, to raise all, uh, the alarm, to sound the alarm, uh, whenever something even remotely close is about to happen, okay? What if what what happens if you deny other forms of Holocaust that happen? Like, are you just being? Is it just like? Is it just your your genocide that matters? Are you are you just like? Are you trying to find awareness of this so you're warning the world about the events that could lead to uh, to stuff like this happening? Like, where is Israel? Shouldn't Israel be leading the charge against China right now and the concentration camps? That are happening in China uh, in China right now, like shouldn't be the country that is leading the way against all of this. But, but I know not, a lot okay? of Jewish organizations in the U.S. are certainly doing that. Yes, yes. So that's why I said not all of them. Okay, that's mm -hmm. why I was like when I said the Holocaust me uh, memorials aren't, but I said like a lot of them aren't because I remembered. I specifically remember that at least there's a few of them that are doing that. Okay, and kudos to those do that are okay because that is why you have a Holocaust museum. That is why you have a Holocaust memorial is to be the voice against those type of type of uh, type of actions. Okay, um, and some people are like, "Hey, Ar Armenian genocide already happened. What are you talking about? Warning about things that could happen." I'm just saying, if you're being selective, okay, if you're if the country of Israel is not recognizing the Armenian genocide, like how hypocritical of the Israeli government not to r recognize the Armenian genocide? Like your our, our genocide matters more than your genocide. Like you're not going to be. Uh, you have no business acting like you are the country that is supposed to be anti-genocide because of the history that you have had if you're only selecting the genocides that are politically convenient for you to be against okay you're using it as a as a you're using it for your own interest rather than what it your own political interest rather than you know spreading the cause of um humanism and anti you know 
bigotry, anti-racism, anti-genocide, anti-collectivism. That's what you're supposed to be. You, Israel should have been the leading country in the world, given its history and what it stands for, and what it's supposed to be protecting against for. Israel should have been the leading country in the world. It should have been like a country that everybody else uses as a role model. Every single human rights violation had happened anywhere else in the world. Israel should have been the first country that steps up and m motivates push against all other countries. Like it had the history, it had the Genesis history to be able to pressure all the other countries to you know to get in line against other countries that are violate viol in violation of human rights right because it has that history you know you know for example a, a country that is like what's that country that is almost being eliminated because of global warming because of rise of sea levels like it's that they're losing their islands i forgot what country that was right but because that country a is a victim yeah, but there's one country that could like come and they have a whole bunch of islands that could just completely be erased and they're Hello? like one of I, I forgot but i think israel also has the history and the story to not, for other countries not to be able to ignore them like given the standing that a lot of jewish people have in different many places around the world well deserved standing i'm not one of those conspiracy theorists right um they would they would be able to pressure a lot of governments into um, bending them in a direction that it would take a much more aggressive stance against any form of human rights violation. But unfortunately, Israel didn't go that route uh, and is not taking that position internationally. Israel um, is only, Israel's government is only interested in its own geopolitics, you know, but yeah, that's the unfortunate. Oh, Maldives, people are saying. Um, I would also be remiss if we didn't also talk about the positive reception of this exhibit in Indonesia. So meanwhile, you know, there's been all this backlash, but representatives from, um, I'm not sure how to pronounce this, Nadulatul Ulama, uh, Indonesia's largest Islamic organization, and in fact, the largest organization in the world, Islamic organization in the world, has spoken out in support of the exhibition. And the local government was also supportive, according to a source familiar with the situation. So, you know, we shouldn't paint this as something that is um, a completely reflective of attitudes in Indonesia. There's also the largest Islamic organization in the country was in full support of it. Thank you for that information. This is why we need you here, Susanna. We need you here. We have all this information. Oh, um, oh shucks. You know, <laughs> no, seriously, a couple of times I wanted to, when you were talking today, I was like, God damn, how does she know all of this? But I forgot to mention to you after you were, after you finished. Guys, please like this stream, uh, like this video, because we are saying a lot of words today that yes, YouTube really hates, in particular, words. the big H. They hate the big H. Please help us out. Yeah. Like this stream. By the way, what a disservice that is to remembering the Holocaust where you can't even mention it on YouTube. Right? Like, people are like, like in, in, in an effort to make sure people don't spread conspiracy theories, YouTube has now made words sensitive to say that we, like, we can't, like, the back, the same thing happened with LGBT people, right? Because we have a lot of trans uh, transphobia and homophobia on YouTube, this, the words that have been, um, used to deprioritize videos have also now affect have also affected videos that are raising awareness you know and bringing positive coverage of lgbt related <laughs> yeah just like saying gay like <laughs> yeah yeah so but stupid. yeah for people who think like oh armin you're being so sensitive you're not gonna get a strike or anything yes we're not gonna get a strike just like repeating like swear words right that's this is why i i don't swear okay i love to swear okay but i can't swear because YouTube, we still swear. Uh, we swear, but every the more swear words you use, the more deprioritize your videos. This is why our channel never grows. Um, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations on being anti-Semitic YouTube. Um, That's right. the same thing with their whole, their whole home fighting homophobia thing. Is like you were actually punishing LGBT creators because they can't yeah. even say gay. Like you actually became homophobic in an effort to fight homophobia. To fight homophobia, twenty-first <laughs> century problems. Yeah. Okay, but also let's let's just be fair to YouTube. It's really hard, like they don't have the manpower to like check every goddamn video and coming up with an algorithm that could detect what's right and what's not wrong. It's almost like 
Like we don't have smart enough AIs right now. So like, they, it, like it's too much to ask anyways, like given the size, the, given the number of videos that gets uploaded on this platform, it's almost unrealistic for us to expect anything um, more. Unless we get competition, then we could expect more. Hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest Blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our Blasphemy that we continue to send you more Blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.